Hi, my name is Ben Armstrong. Hi, this is David Koch. My name is Thomas Maurer. Hi, I'm Donna Sarkar. Hi, my name is Lana Montgomery. Hi, I'm Seth Juarez. Hi, I'm Aaron Thomas. I'm Jess Dodson. Hi, I'm Rocky Heckman. Hi, I'm Sonia Cuff. Hi, I'm Troy Hunt. Hello, this is Wally Mead. My name is Reed Purvis. Hi, I'm Lars Clean. Hi, my name is Alan Birchall. Hi, I'm Adam Fowler. Hi, I'm Sky Guthrie, and you're listening to the Need to Know Podcast. All the latest Microsoft Cloud news, as well as industry guest deep dive conversations. It's a Need to Know Podcast. All thanks to the CIA Ops patron community. The Need to Know Podcast. Catch us on Twitter and Facebook. N2K Podcast. And online at ciaops.podbean.com. Welcome along to the Need to Know Podcast. My name is Robert Crane and you join me for episode 302 in May 2023. So let us go through some ways that you can reach out to me if you have any comments or thoughts about the show. Uh, please use email director at ciaops.com. You can also look at my YouTube channel at Director CIA. Don't forget the reach out via Twitter at Director CIA again. Also on Mastodon, twit.social forward slash at Director CIA. I also have the option for people to join my team's shared channel. If you're interested in that, I'll put up the link uh, in the show notes here. But do encourage, there's no cost to do that. You get a feel for uh, what team's shared channels are all, all about and also share some relevant information. Don't forget the CIOPS merch store. Always good to make a statement when you go to your uh, next conference there. And uh, all of these things are brought to you by the CIOPS patron community. So if you're interested in keeping up to date with the Microsoft Cloud on a regular basis, uh, please go in and consider subscribing www.ciaopspatron.com. So as always, Microsoft has been busy pumping out information for us on their cloud-based products. The first one I will call your attention is one here called Responding to Targeted Mail Attacks with Defender uh, 365. So again, this talks about uh, Microsoft Defender for Office 365, uh, really targeted to help you understand how to protect yourself against uh, spear phishing, uh, some really, really helpful hints in here, understanding things like the scope of the attack, how to use the uh, Explorer, Threat Explorer, and also to use the KQL language inside the admin portal to really get a better idea of what's going on at a low level. Now, you'll also find information about the mail delivery and spam filter settings that are recommended to uh, provide better protection and also the handy little configuration analyzer you can use to evaluate your environment to make sure it is at best practices and then potentially use that to automate stepping into uh, best practices. So also really handy here, which I would recommend thinking about the uh, ability to allow your users to report messages, so to report failures, to report uh, white lists and so on, but very, very handy where you can submit uh, the threat to Microsoft for evaluation. So quite a substantial blog post here, lots of really good information uh, in there, some handy KQL queries as well, so I recommend you go in and have a look at that. Uh, the next one I've got here is targeted at the resellers. So this is talking about Microsoft 365 Lighthouse, which is a multi-tenant management capability for uh, resellers. So again, some nice information here about you know setting this up, using it to manage and, and monitor uh, multiple customer sites here. So a detailed information here, plus some really handy links if you're looking to use Microsoft 365 Lighthouse. Now, don't forget that Lighthouse is free. Um, you do need to be a CSP partner and have tenants that typically have business premium E3 or whatever uh, in them that can be managed and monitored. Uh, but again, if you do, very, very handy, very capable uh, option here. So again, go and have a look at that at Microsoft 365 uh, Lighthouse. Now, one of the uh, big things that I'll probably talk about in the editorial a bit later on is the concept of uh, Copilot, Microsoft's um, AI, I suppose you could call it. Now, Microsoft has put out a blog post here called Introducing the Microsoft 365 Copilot Early Access Program and New Capabilities in Copilot. Now, if you read the blog here, you'll see that um, there is a preview or there is an early preview to uh, Copilot but it is limited to an invite only of 600 customers. One would think they are probably going to be the largest of Microsoft's customers. Uh, so again, some interesting stuff in here worthwhile going in, keeping up to date with what's happening uh, in uh, Syntax, uh, sorry, with uh, Copilot. You'll see that it's beginning to roll out uh, across SharePoint, OneNote, 
um, you know, even things like whiteboard, PowerPoint, uh, and so on. So this is a nice summary blog to give you where Copilot fits in all of these products. Now we are expecting to see more information from Microsoft Build uh, next week, uh, but if you want to keep on top of what's happening with uh, Copilot, I'd certainly go in and read through, have a look at all the good little videos in here around Copilot and how it is being injected uh, into basically all the Microsoft uh, products here. Now, speaking of Copilot, there is a dedicated post here around Copilot uh, and SharePoint. Uh, I think, again, this is a really interesting concept of allowing people to get the result they want without necessarily having to have the you know uh, deep dive skills uh, to achieve you know a good looking SharePoint site or to solve a problem uh, using something like SharePoint there. So again, this blog post will give you some overview, some idea of what's coming uh, with the Copilot integration with uh, SharePoint. Again, quite an extensive blog here, really, really worth going in and having a read. Uh, SharePoint is really making some great strides in the look and feel, I think. It's becoming you know, almost like a normal website, really. The capabilities that are built in there to give you that look and feel uh, are really, really powerful, considering you know, um, probably you know, half a dozen years or so ago, it was pretty maligned for its you know, very bland, enterprisey look. It's become very, very modern. So again, if you are interested in SharePoint, especially the look and the feel and its integration with Copilot, I would recommend that you take a moment and go in and uh, read this post. Now, remember, all the information links will be in the show notes for you to go and review. Now, another really handy one I saw was this public preview token protection for sign-in sessions. So if you aren't aware what we see out there, attackers using what's called MFA fatigue attacks, where they constantly prompt users for MFA. Uh, another option out there is also where they can jump in the middle or steal the token from the browser session once the user has completed that authentication. Now, this capability as part of conditional access is going to basically lock the uh, token for login to the actual device where the login was performed. So if the token is stolen and then taken and used somewhere else on a different machine, it won't work. Now, again, again, Remember, this is in preview, so again, use it uh, judiciously. I've set this up on a demo system, works really well, and effectively you can think about it as locking a you know a user or a login session to a particular device, so the user can't jump across uh, multiple sessions. So I think it's really powerful if you have that capability, but you know, remember in things like SMB, we do have the need for a user to move around potentially between different machines. So my advice, as always, to go in there and test it out before you go charging and implementing across your organization. But a very, very good option, I think, for uh, minimizing the risk or eliminating the risk of, you know, the token, MFA token um, stealing attacks that are going to make the environment uh, basically more secure. Now, another handy little blog post here is called Getting Step-by-Step -Step Guidance for Enabling Key Features in Microsoft Defender. Now, I find that a lot of people out there aren't aware of all the Defender products they have with their subscription, even down to things like what's available in Windows 10. Uh, I've written a couple of blog posts about this. So you can go and search my blog, blog.ciaups.com for Defender. A uh, particular blog called All the Defenders I'd recommend, but... Uh, the point is that a lot of these features are not enabled. So you may have capabilities that come with your license for Defender, but what we find is they're largely not enabled in many environments. So this short little blog post will give you uh, a starting point to make sure you're turning on all the features that you're probably paying for and probably not aware uh, that you can use to help protect uh, your environment. So go in and have a look at that. Now, of course, there is also a nice digest here of all the Microsoft 365 admin stuff that has happened recently. Uh, so lots and lots of details for administrators of Microsoft uh, 365 here. Things around, you know, reports, uh, exp controlling experience, um, training, all of that, which you may not be uh, aware of that Microsoft 365 does pro provide for admins. Uh, again, uh, makes life a lot easier when we do see all this. So again, don't forget to go and have a look at this. Look at all the links and I'll make sure that this article is up in the show notes for you to go and uh, dive into. Now, some new features around Entra. So Entra is Microsoft's overarching branding or uh, marketing term, I suppose, for its identity. Um, Management tools, so things like, things like Azure AD, Privilege Identity Management, you know, those sort of 
uh, capabilities are in here and again they have a range of new features here so a, a short little blog post that will give you you know all the updates around you know things like Azure AD also identity governance and you know the ability to do multi-cloud passwordless so some of the new capabilities in um, you know passwordless for iOS and also you know working with B2C and B2C uh, identity so you can go and have a look at this always good to keep up to date with what's happening in uh, Microsoft's uh, protection identity protection areas so again this article is new Microsoft Entra features are now available um, also in the security space we're talking here or this article is talking about automating streamlining vulnerability management in the client so it really talks to the fact that again Microsoft has a lot of capabilities a lot of resources out there that you may not be taking advantage of so uh, it talks about the importance of things like automation, how you can really leverage that to get a lot of work done uh, to, to churn through some of uh, the, the vast amount of information uh, that is coming your way, especially when it comes to security. It also talks about you know making sure your machines are Azure AD joined, you've got you know, automatic enrollment, uh, onboarding for Defender for Endpoint, and again, it gives you a lot of other you know, really good recommendations to make sure you're taking advantage of all the security capabilities um, that Microsoft does provide. And especially, I would call out those that have Microsoft 365 Business Premium. These are going to enable most of the features they talk about uh, in this uh, article here. So, so commend that to you to go and have a look at. Now, the last thing in the news section I'll call out is the fact that uh, next week, being the you know, May 23 to 25, is going to be Build. So Build from Microsoft is its developer-focused uh, conference. Now, this is really handy to keep up to date with uh, what Microsoft is announcing, what's coming. Now, yes, it is focused on developers, but there has been more and more IT Pro content in these sort of uh, events, and I would certainly commend you to keep an eye on it watch out for all the announcements that are coming. I'd certainly recommend you go and have a look at the session. So go through and have a look at the catalog. Cost you nothing to sign up and register virtually. Um, you'll probably see, we expect to see some information around Copilot, obviously AI, um, some of the other integrations that are going on. So if you want to keep up to date, I'd certainly be talking, uh, making sure that you're going in and keeping abreast of what is happening with Build. Remember, uh, no cost to go and register for that. Then you can always watch the sessions on demand. That's typically what I do. So I would register, I'd create a catalog of all the sessions that look really good. I would then work my way through those sessions, you know, in my own time. And I typically watch them, uh, you know, at, at, double the speed so I can get through twice as many. So I really like that capability that Microsoft's provided with these uh, virtual uh, attendance at conferences. So again, build next week, go in, uh, sign up. You'll find that at build.microsoft.com. Now, given all the news and, you know, I suppose hype around AI, I thought I'd take a moment just to maybe give you some thoughts, give you some perspectives here that I've sort of picked up over the, the period since Microsoft has made it clear or Microsoft really stepped to the forefront of what we like to call uh, AI. Now, personally, I don't think that, you know, what everybody's hyping as AI really is AI. It sort of can't think for itself. It's, again, I suppose most people like to think of it as large language models, probably a good uh, description technically but doesn't make a lot of sense to the average person so AI is that all encompassing term so again even though I don't agree with you know what the calling AI let's call it AI just to, for consistency and uh, speed here now obviously with all these new technologies you know we need to make a decision here is everything AI everybody's talking about is it all hype so I think, yes, there is always a factor around the hype. It's the new kid on the block. Uh, is it going to be the new cryptocurrency, for example, and you know go to a massive peak and then fall away? I don't think so, but we do need to make sure that we keep a level head. We look at this pragmatically and its application to business. So I would suggest to you that at this stage, you know, there is going to be a percentage of hype that you need to you know, sit back, take verification, double check what people are saying. I mean, some of the things I've heard about, you know, what ChatGPT can do and it can drive a car, it can, you know, uh, do all these magical things that, you know, fly a plane, do all this sort of stuff, which I don't think is necessarily true. I think people, you know, again, run away with themselves and, you know, the hype cycle we see on social media and so on. So I think there's a, a certainly a factor in there. 
Now, given that, I certainly would suggest that there is a revolution coming. Now, it's probably going to take a lot longer to really engulf us or to really see it day to day, but I certainly think it is coming. Now, the starting point I would suggest for many people is you need to go out and play with ChatGPT. So you can sign up for a free account. You can you know go and ask a question, get a feel for it, uh, understand what it is. So I think that if you're in IT, if you're in, as an IT pro and you have customers that you're responsible for, they're going to come and ask you, you know, what's all this AI? How does it affect us? What can we do? And you need to have some knowledge around it. The best way to get that knowledge is to go in, sign up, have a play, have some understanding in there. Now, I think once you've got that, you begin to see, okay, well, yeah, this could be quite powerful because instead of a, a, asking, you know, a question of a search engine, getting you know, a range of results, and typically a lot of those now are advertisements, you can go in there and get some really succinct information. Now, of course, it's not perfect. It, it's looking at old information. We get that, but, you know, project a number of years into the future. So step one, I would suggest if you haven't already, please make some time, spend an afternoon, spend a couple of hours, playing with uh, chat gpt yourself to get an idea of what's possible what it can do because that's going to give you the best idea the best grounding uh, and i think a lot of people i've spoken to really haven't done that you know they're, they're basically winging it uh, so again go and get some real hands-on practical experience with chat gpt now microsoft's sort of implementation of ai that's going to be directly relevant to the end user is you know, their Copilot brand. Now, Copilot, they've already using and uh, implemented for uh, GitHub that allows you know, coders to write code quickly without having to you know, start from scratch. Now, they are going to extend that into Microsoft 365. So probably the big advantage to consider here is that ChatGPT largely looks at the internet and is outward facing. So it's facing out at the moment at old data. Copilot looks at your internal documents, your internal data, emails, and so on. That is not something that ChatGPT can do. Um, now, when we turn search inside our organization, it is a very, very powerful tool, especially the small you are, because it gives you that leverage. So if you haven't used search in Microsoft 365, you should, because I really think that's the killer app. It allows you to put everything in the cloud and then have that all searchable. So, you know, I can take a picture of a receipt and that can be OCR'd, converted to text, and then I can search for it inside Microsoft 365 today. So super powerful. Now, if I can turn that and query the data and say, please find me the invoice for this between these dates, uh, and it gives me a result, again, that's a real time saver and it makes it a lot easier for people to use. So again, remember that when you play with ChatGPT, it's largely looking at old internet data at this point. Copilot from Microsoft is going to look internally at your own you know, personal private data and give you that same sort of capability, but uh, with your, you know, your own environment. Now, to Microsoft's credit, Microsoft has had a lot of challenges around naming. So, you know, we can look at something like Defender. There are a bazillion different Defender products and it is very confusing for people to know, you know, is this Defender, that Defender, does this Defender do this? No, that Defender does that. Um, I think they've got it right here with Copilot. I think firstly, Copilot is a really good uh, brand here because it's going to be uh, pushed as an assistant, right? So rather than AI, you know, taking over the world, Terminator-esque style uh, thinking, it's really positioning it as your intelligent assistant. So I think that's going to be really, really key here. That's going to mean that more people are going to adopt it. They're going to see it as something to help them get their job done, not replace uh, what they're actually doing. So I think the naming that Microsoft has uh, basically landed on is very, very good. It makes sense across you know GitHub, Excel, SharePoint, OneDrive, all that sort of stuff. So I think that's a really, really uh, big positive for Microsoft that it has landed the branding, it has got that out there. It's gonna build that around that. So I think that's, again, a big tick uh, for Microsoft around that brand. As silly as it sounds, I think that will avoid confusion and people pick up uh, and run with that. Now, I think Copilot, where it's really going to help you know, the average user, is going to be a starting point. So rather than having to create a document from scratch or take an existing document and then you know, modify it and edit, you'll be able to use Copilot to firstly go in and create a new document. So you could go in and say, look, please create me a summary of this, or please go in and give me five points for you know, this contract or those sort of things. Now, 
if you're like me, one of the hardest things to do is to start from a completely blank, blank page. So that leads to procrastination, that leads to loss of productivity. So having that capability to look across all your informational data and then use that as a starting point and pull all the different points in is going to, I think, be a real benefit and something that a lot of people are going to be super, super interested in and keen to use to get them going. Now, another thought around Copilot is that it's going to allow you to achieve results without necessarily having to have the skill set. So a good example here is Excel. So Microsoft has a you know, YouTube video where it talks about using Excel to analyze data. So let's say that you've got a table of data, rows and columns. Now, rather than having to work out how to do pivot tables and complexity and all that sort of stuff that, you know, again, comes with uh, using a tool like Excel, you could just go into Copilot and say, look, I want to see a chart that shows this versus this. And then once you've got that chart, you can use Copilot and plain English to go in and customize that to get exactly what you want. So again, the concept here is you don't need really to know anything about pivot tables. That capability is in Excel and Copilot is allowing you or allowing an average user to leverage that high end power. So I see the capability of Copilot being able to unlock a lot of the features that have been in products like Word, Excel, PowerPoint for years, but a lot of people have never invested uh, their knowledge or invested in the knowledge to be able to go and use these products to full effect. So I think Copilot's got a real opportunity here to open all that up and allow that sort of uh, capability to be brought to the forefront and allow users to really see the benefits that the products do provide, which I don't think they're particularly well versed in uh, at this point in time. Now, if you then also extend that concept to security signals, so if you're monitoring security, think of all the things you've got to monitor every day, you know, log in this and failed log in that and this application, that application, this patch, that's that patch. Now, if you take the concept of Copilot and apply it to security, which Microsoft has talked about, um, I think that's, again, really, really powerful, especially in SMB, because we've got so many signals, so many things that we need to manage, monitor, and maintain. And, you know, you need to be potentially a master of KQL. You need to be a master with Sentinel and all these Defender products. You know, that's a lot for people to be across when they've got, you know, other things that are pressing in their day. So providing that capability for Copilot to you know, solve problems, to identify security threats quickly and easily, and do it in plain English without needing to have these super, super deep skills. Again, I see a lot, a lot of benefits for people who, who need those capabilities. Now, with that said, to me, that also indicates that there is a lot of opportunity uh, for SMB around Copilot, because it's going to give people the leverage to their own data that they've probably never had before. Their ability to you know, take data which is sitting in their environment and really now push it through more advanced tools that they don't need the skill set for. So they can be far more you know, competitive, productive and so on by using Copilot to leverage all of these really powerful tools they probably have you know, never or don't have a lot of uh, information or a lot of idea about. So I think that's really, really super important. I think a lot of people are going to gravitate to that. So I think in SMB, it does have you know a huge amount of relevance because it's going to give them that leverage, that capability to be much more effective um, than they probably are today and really get the results out of products and services they're probably already paying for, but probably uh, not using. Now, with that said, there's still going to be the need to learn how to use Copilot. To get the most out of it, you're really going to have to spend some time and you know, dive into it and understand, you know, what's the best way to ask questions? What's the, uh, you know, the approach that I should take to get the best results? You know, just using it randomly will give you random results. So the search engine is a very good example. I see a lot of people using a search engine very generically. So if they do a search for bicycle shops, they don't appreciate they're going to get results for bicycle shops and bicycle shops. They can get three times the amount of results they expected. So same thing here. So learning how to use a search engine uh, properly and efficiently is going to be the same, I think, with Copilot. So there's an opportunity to provide the training, the encouragement, the capability to really use the tool to get the most out of it. So again, that's something to take away here. It's not going to automatically, magically solve all of this by you just looking at the page. You're still going to have to ask it questions and those who learn how to use the tool uh, effectively are going to get the best results, are going to be you know, the most efficient when they apply that tool to their information. 
Now, in SMB, another interesting thing here is, okay, I see a lot of you know retail, uh, resellers out there who continue buying more and more tools for technology. Oh, I need a tool to manage this, I need a tool to manage this, I need all these tools. Uh, and now they're beginning to say, oh, we need more staff to manage it. We can't get staff to do it. Now, if it was me, I would be looking to minimize the, the human impact and leverage off the automation and the AI as best I can. Now, yes, it is early days. Yes, you may need a solution now, but I think that that's going to give you that capability. I don't think you can leverage with you know, the limited amount of labor and the time to spin up labor, I think you're better off putting that into, you know, learning the AI, maximizing the AI, maximizing all the tools that you have before you go and look at stuff outside your organization. So I don't think it'll necessarily replace jobs, but I think it's going to make those who use it far more effective, which will remove the need, I think, to keep adding staff or keep adding labor to solve problems. So Smart organizations going forward are going to be those organizations that look at automation first and then maybe things like labor or expertise after that. Because like I said, you know, the co-pilot's going to give you that ability to achieve something without having necessarily having the skill um, to do that. So you don't need to employ someone who knows pivot tables when co-pilot can help you create, you know, those, uh, those pivot tables. Now, of course, all of this is conjecture. All of this, we have to wait and see what Copilot actually is going to be and what it is like. Now, we are certainly going to expect more information about that uh, at Build next week. So that's why I would suggest that you, you know, stay tuned to that so that you've got a much better idea of what's coming. Now, the positive thing is, like I said in the news, is that Microsoft is moving very quickly with this. Very surprisingly, normally they take you know much longer to bring something to market, but they have brought you know Copilot and all that sort of stuff to market. My gut feeling is is we're not far away from some sort of preview, some sort of uh, general release. Now, what the cost is, we don't know. How they're going to present it, but uh, I think you know you can see in the fact that they're already pushing it out or providing you know uh, limited private previews that it is you know pretty much ready to go. It's ready to for uh, general availability, just a matter of timing that. So I think we'll see a lot more information around build. I would expect potentially there may be some opportunity for a preview. So again, uh, why I would encourage you to make sure that you're keeping up to date with everything in build. And after that, I would expect probably we're looking maybe one to two months before you know, we get some sort of general availability or general preview out there in the market. Now, not all products may be brought to market immediately we might get you know something like you know co-pilot for one note first or whiteboard first but we may get them all at once because they certainly look to me as though they're ready to come ready to go so again keep your eye on that now with that said will all of this be hype will it actually convert i think if you look at previous you know hype cycles things like cryptocurrency I think that where that was detached was from the reality, it sort of detached from the average person. Now, there was a group of people who were really into crypto and learned it and loved it, I get it, but uh, the reality was it didn't make its way into mainstream. It wasn't, uh, didn't end up using it for everyday transactions, which sort of what the average person sort of expected there. I think this AI, this, especially this Copilot, is a very different beast here simply because it has direct relevance to the end user. You know, I want to create a, you know, a table of charts and this and analyze this data without having to have that skill set. So I think it's something that they can take and run with immediately. It's something that's relatively easy to pick up. It's not super complex, perhaps like crypto was. Um, so I... At the moment, I'm very positive on this. I think it's going to have a good future. There is obviously, as I said initially, still going to be some hype around it, which we have to work through. But uh, I think it's going to create a foundation here and we're going to move forward from that. And it's going to be built into sort of next to everything, especially Microsoft 365 uh, these days. Now, that said, that's a huge opportunity because it's a big uh, greenfields market, which means not very many people are in there there. Now, yes, there's going to be hype. Yes, there's going to be snake oil salespeople in there. I get it. However, um, if you're looking to pivot or you're looking to include something in your own business or focus on something, especially if you're an IT reseller, I would be encouraging you to make sure that you're across all this AI stuff, you know, especially the chat GPT. If you haven't played with that, please go and play with that. 
then have a look at Copilot, get ready for that, and you can jump into the market and be early and be one of the thought leaders uh, in this environment. Certainly something that I'm going to focus on more and more and more on becoming more and more positive around this as a way forward and a great opportunity. So I certainly will be doing that myself. But I think like moving to the cloud, there is a big opportunity here for, especially for a smaller reseller to help uh, customers understand AI, its impact, to implement it, to get them started, uh, and to really help them make the most of this product, uh, which certainly is coming. So there are my thoughts. Love to hear your feedback. Remember, you can reach out, things like email, director at ciaups.com. I'll make sure that all the links to this show go up for you to go in and have a look at. Please provide me any feedback, thoughts, and any other topics that you'd like to see covered uh, in this podcast. But I certainly hope you've got some thinking points around here. So AI, again, may not be the be-all and end-all. Uh, again, it's a bit of, there's a lot of marketing hype, I agree. However, underneath all that, I do think there is a major opportunity. It's becoming clearer and clearer to me every day. Uh, and I would suggest, you know, if you haven't invested some time, go in, have a look, have a play, have a think about it. Because I think, you know, it is going to have a big impact. I don't think it's going to go away of cryptocurrency and so on. So from me, I certainly recommend it's worth something worth uh, keeping an eye on. We should see more information from Build and in upcoming uh, podcasts. I'll certainly spend some more time talking about it and letting you know more about the Microsoft Copilot capabilities, which I think are going to be very, very positive for a large range of users. But with that, I will take this opportunity once again to thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Need to Know podcast. You have been listening to the Need to Know podcast from CIA Ops. For training on using technologies like SharePoint Online or Microsoft 365, visit www.ciaopsacademy.com. By purchasing from the selections available, you'll be directly supporting this podcast. To provide feedback on this episode, visit www.ciaops.com slash contact.